Hello there everyone, it's Carol again, Crafty Emporium. Okay, so on at the end of the last video, I think I did a bit of a rubbish job. So I'm going to go through this page again, this one, all right? Slower. So that hopefully I don't do such a rubbish job. Sorry, just rearranging myself on my seat there. Okay, so, 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 so. What we're going to do is we're going to add two corners, one there and one there, so then this can slot inside. Let me move them out the way, or to the side. So this is the sheet of paper that I've cut out and I've made sure that it's a lot smaller than the page, all right, so that I know that it's going to fit on. And so I just remembered something. And um, what I did was I used this corner punch, and what it does is it gives me that shape in the corners, all right. So it's an inverted corner punch. And this just helps to give it the look of as though it's sat underneath um, photo mount. Words come to me eventually. And then I inked up the page. Now this one has got lines in the background so it means that if you want to add a photo in the middle and then write around it you've got some lines to write on as well and it just makes it look a little bit more decorative. Now what I then did was I only attached glue on the back side at the top edge. I didn't do it all the way around. Now, of course, what you could do is you could put photo mounts on the black card and then don't do this inverted corner bit and then insert them, un insert the corners of the page underneath the photo mounts. Now, I'm just being aware of the border that I'm leaving here and here. And then I'm just gluing that at the top. And this was a piece of spare black card that I've got. So I now need to trim that down. So I'm just eyeballing it from this side to see what kind of a, a space I'm leaving between the edge of the page and where I'm going to cut to see, make sure that it's roughly the same as those. And I'm going to do the same on this side. Now you can measure if you want, you don't have to eyeball it. It's just I don't mind doing the eyeballing bit. And that is now the card that you're left with. And so, and I'm not going to lift it up too high because this glue hasn't quite set yet. But you can lift that up and you've got somewhere to put a photograph underneath or to write on. And you've got two sides that you can write on as well. Okay. The next part we need to do is to make the corners. Now what I was trying to say in the last video, put that over there a minute, is that on this image from the digital kit, and it's the same with any other digital kit as well, is that don't just see the page for what it is, all right? So if it says it's a pocket, doesn't mean you've got to use it for a pocket. This is about you just using your imagination. Now this page itself is quite big and I will probably not use it unless I'm going to put this in a photo, photo frame and then add a photo on top of there. But I could utilize this part of the design here and this part of the design here. And I, if you remember, I did this awful scribbly drawing thing. Okay. Another way of doing it is a technique that we use in patchwork, which is making see-through templates. And this is part of the perspex that, uh, perspex, <laughs> Mark at me, part of the acetate that I'd got left over. So I cut it into a square. 
and then I cut it from corner to corner and then I've put my um, micropore, micropore tape along each of the three edges. Now it doesn't matter how deep it is in this instance because I'm not doing patchwork and quilting but there is um, a quilter's quarter tape so the tape is actually just a quarter of an inch wide which then gives you your seam allowance okay but this is just so as I can see where the edge of the acetate is all right so that's all I'm using it for now what I'm going to do because it's acetate I can see through let me just bring that up I can see through it because it's the acetate so I can maneuver that around to wherever I want it to be so that I can see what it is that I'm actually cutting out. I'm going to cut it out to this size as well because I can always trim it down so I'm just going to line the edge of my acetate denoted by the edge of the tape across there and I'm just going to pick out let's see it's going to pick out which bit I want. Yeah, I think I'm going to go there. So I want that bit of flower in there. Oh, oh, do I want to go there? And have that bit in. No, I'm going to go there. And now I can draw around that. This is much better than me scribbling, isn't it? Yes. Go on, say yes, Carol. I can hear you. But I can't. Okay, so now I've got the area that I can utilise and I'm going to spin it round and I'm going to do the same down at this end. And I'm just going to pick out the bit that I want. Now I can see that there's these two buds here because I can see through my micropore tape so that means that they're going to be included in the corner as well. Now, as it happens, this particular corner that I'm doing or that I'm using is going to be too big. But I'd rather it be too big than too small because I can always trim off. I can't add. Now, I'm just going to cut it out by hand just because I can. Just occasionally I do like to um, cut by hand rather than using the paper trim. I don't know what that's all about. What would I do? Okay, so there's one corner. Now as I say, these corners are way too big. But I'm going to trim them down. I think the reason why I like cutting by hand sometimes is it just helps me to keep my eye in with straight lines. Because with the paper trimmer sometimes you become a bit lazy and you go by the measurement rather than by looking at the straight line. Okay, let me put that to one side. And bring my journal over. So these two corners, one's going to go down here and one's going to come up here. Now personally I think that they're too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this out. Am I going to take it out? What am I going to do? I'm going to do it that way I think. So I'm taking it off to the side until I've got to the edge of that flower. and I'm just going to mark the edge of the page from here just going to mark it on there on that corner and I'm just going to trim off that bit off there see if that looks any better still quite overpowering isn't it oh, I'm going to take a bit off this edge now can you notice I'm taking it off the straight edges into that corner rather than across diagonally. That's better. Okay, so I want this on the same size now. So 
I'm just going to sit that on there. I'm going to use that as my guide. Because the other thing that I can do so I don't have to have them lined up with the edge of the paper here. I can actually take them beyond and below that point. Can you see how that's sitting off and on the black rather than this one's on the edge of the paper? So I could do that if I wanted. No, I like them on there. Yeah, we like them on there. That's better, isn't it? Okay, so I'm going to ink those up. So on the original, what I did was along the di long diagonal bit, along the long diagonal bit, so not this right angle corner here, but along this diagonal bit, diagonal bit God, I can't speak now, because I added some trim. But I'm going to add all those extra trim bits afterwards, once I've got all the paper stuff in place. In fact, do I want that pink one at the top? Yeah, I do. Okay, so I'm going to add a thin line of glue or a wobbly line of glue along the two shorter straight edges, the right angled straight edges, I should say, and glue that down. And do the same with the top bit. I'm making sure that these edges are lined up with this paper. So then this, and I'll have to do it gently because that glue won't have set off yet. This will sit, come on, go in. That will sit in there. And I'm not going to push it all the way in, it will actually go in further. But I just don't want it to catch on the glue. So that will then slot in there, okay? And then by the time I've added some trim on there as well, it just makes it that little bit pretty okay so I'll just show you again on this one so it's got the card and it's got the two corners with some trim on and then inside of the envelope pocket itself again I've used the cabinet cards again and just glued them onto the back of a piece of black card So that then slots in there okay now this next one did I did that oh, I've lost all my I've lost my bits okay let me just have a slurp of tea again sorry it's when my mouth starts to dry up that um it starts to aggravate my throat Okay, so what I did here was I cut this shape out twice. So from a sheet like this, I would cut that shape out, out of both sides. Put that to one side. Now this sheet that I've got down here doesn't have any lines in it, but the one that I'm using does. Not that it matters, but it does mean that if I want to write on those, then I can do. And so I'm just going to cut those out. Now this is where you see, doing that cutting by hand instead of using the paper trimmer helps me to train my eye to cut and also to steady my hand. 
and I'm trying carefully to cut it out and not encroach on the decorative bit too much because then I can use the decorative bit somewhere else. Right, so that's one. Get a second one. Is this boring? Watching me cut paper. Have you all fast forwarded? Oh, I could be saying anything now when you fast forwarded me. And so you're not hearing a word that I'm saying. I could be passing you a bit of gossip. And you wouldn't know, would you? You wouldn't know if you fast forwarded me. Okay, so I've got my two bits. Alright, and what I'm going to do is once I've inked them up, just finding the end. There we go. And I don't want to ink them up too much because I don't want them to stand out massively. So I'm really only just scraping the edge. Okay. So this first one. I'm going to put my micropore along this one edge. Okay, so can you see how much I've got hanging off? So I haven't got much. I'm just going to cut that off there. I'd do better off cutting from the back side, Carol. That. And then I'm going to place this piece directly on top of that, starting at this side where I haven't got my micropore tape. Okay, so that's that big glue down there. And then I'm going to flip that open. Put some micropore down that bit. But I'm not having it extending beyond the ends of this. Okay, so this one I want to put the micropore on this side so it will then flap open that way. Can you hear my voice going again? Okay, and again, try not to have too much overhanging the edge. And then from the back side, I'm going to cut that off. And then again, I'm going to lay that on top. Now then, I need to make sure that this edge is butt up against this card because otherwise when I close it if I bring it too far out if I bring it too far over this way it'll end up creasing yep okay turn it the right way around okay so you can see that now opens and that now opens i just need to put some micropore down here now the reason why i'm adding the micropore on the inside as well is if you touch that now you can actually feel the sticky of the underside of the micropore which is on the other side of the card and having it on this side as well just makes it act like a hinge and helps to protect it then from being pulled off. Okay, so that's going to go in like that, and that's going to go in like that. 
Now, if I use my bone folder, <laughs> which is over there on my desk, so I'm just going to use the back of my scissors. If you keep burnishing down that micropore, it disappears a bit more into the background. I mean, yeah, it's there and you can see it, but it's better than having a patterned washi tape on top of the patterned paper, which will stand out more. So it depends on the papers that you're using as to whether you can get away with using your washi tape or not. There we go. As I say, I know it's there, I can see it, but it's not as bad as if I used a patterned washi tape. Okay, now, do you remember I saved this bit and I said to you about punching out a little squircle? Now, I did bring over my circle punch. Where? Oh, it's there. It's there. Thought I'd lost it. So, I'm going to punch out, and if I actually look, it's actually, if I open that up, look, it's the same part of the pattern as that. So, it means it's going to blend in quite nicely. Okay. And I'm just going to run me dibby dabby dooby. Can you imagine me going into a shop and going, have you got any dibby dabby doobies? And they'd be like, what the hell is she on about? They wouldn't have a clue, would they? Okay, it's that one, then that one. And then, glue, where for art the glue? Come to mummy. I'm just going to put glue right on this top edge up here, but on the back side, all right? I'm not going halfway down. I'm just doing it on that top quarter bit. I'm just going to put some glue on there and then I'm going to overlap the circle so the glued bit is up here in fact I probably need to go down just a touch more there we go. so the glue bit is just here because you still need to have some space between the edge of the glue and the top edge of the paper for this particular technique to work. And in fact, I'm just going to move it across just a touch if it'll go. No, it's glued down. Oh well. Never mind. Now I'm not going to do it because that glue won't have set. So I'll show you on this one. So that what happens is that that flips from under there and it flips from under there so this just acts as a bit of a closure to hold these two in place and as you can see what I've done on the inside here is I put some washi tape on there and there and then that's the background of the of this page all right so then I can fold that or bend it I should say underneath that circle and then I can bend that to fit underneath that circle as well so what you could do is you could have a photograph on there and then write on the inside bits and then the other thing that I did on this page was I added lace at the top lace at the bottom put a bit of cheesecloth on here and then another one of those flowers from um, from Hobbycraft okay oh that was the other thing I meant to show you and then in the envelope part itself I just had another piece of card which I folded in half, made sure that it fit inside the envelope so I trimmed it down accordingly and on the front of it I've got glued another one of the cabinet cards so that again I've got somewhere to put photos on the inside or on the back edge. So then we come to the back bit. Now I'm going to leave that bit. In fact, I think I'm going to end it there. So let's close that up, move that out of the way, because I just want to talk to you quickly about what I'm going to do in the next lot of videos. Okay, so here I've printed a page onto tracing paper. 
So I'm going to go through that technique of printing onto the tracing paper and also how to print the envelope onto um, tracing paper, stroke, whatever that word is. What's that? Vellum. I always get that, forget that word. Okay, so how to print onto the tracing paper and the vellum. I will show you how to do the waterfall so that if you haven't done one of those before I'll show you how to do that and how to go about adding the magnet. This pocket is pretty straightforward it's the pocket out of the kit and I just trimmed it down so that it fit on the um, background paper and just attached it, attached some lace, some trim and a button and then on this page I just attached a belly band but higher up so that um, I could tuck the envelope over and the tag underneath it. So these last two pages are fairly simple and I'm not going to do a tutorial on those per se, okay? But I will do a video on this one and a video on this one, all right? So two, possibly three more to come. We'll see how we get on. Okay, that's it for today, and uh, I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.